This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur and today's case is about a 48-year-old gentleman who has presented to the clinic with history of diminished vision for the last few months. Past history reveals that he had sustained a blunt trauma many years back and it is evident in the form of these small sphincter tears and uh, there is very mild phacodonosis and in the inferior quadrant i am suspecting about 2 clock hours of zonal dehiscence the phacodonosis is not very marked and uh, i don't expect any major issue intraoperatively but let's see how things pan out on the operation theory table we can see that the pupil is very well dilated now and i can see the zonular insertion in the inferior quadrant the equator of the lens is very much visible here so I expect the zonules to be weak in this quadrant although not much patient is very anxious so i'm just giving additional subtenance injection of uh, 1 ml of lignocaine to enhance the his analgesia during surgery of course he's going to receive an intracranial dose of uh, preservative free lignocaine as well as the side ports are being created and the capsule is being stained let me take you through the thought process which one should have while planning such cases although it does not look to be intimidating but we need to be having our plans ready the first step wherein we really get the idea of zonular health is when we puncture the anti capsule so the moment we puncture the anti capsule that's the only time when we really come to know the exact health of the zonules So as I'm puncturing the capsule now I can see that there are not much radial folds emanating from the puncture area so it indicates that the zonules are quite healthy I'm quickly switching on to my forceps and as I'm tearing I can see some folds adjacent to the tearing edge but they're not so severe indicating the zonular health is all right so in this situation i can plan to postpone my insertion of ctr to slightly later stage of surgery so that's the reason why i would want to watch how the capsule behaves during the rexus i'm aiming a rexus about 5 mm i want to be central to the visual axis and not central to the pupil because the pupil is slightly oblong and is dilated more towards one side Now I believe that the rexus is quite well centered and is adequately sized. Cortical cleaving hyoid dissection is an important aspect of uh, the surgery during in such cases and as I'm doing uh, the hyoid dissection I can see the posterior fluid wave and I'm trying to decompress the bag by pushing back the lens on and now I'm just trying to do hyoid delineation and At this point unintentionally the nucleus just pops out of the bag so i have a nucleus which is prolapsed itself out of the bag into the anterior chamber and i need to manage this nucleus in the anterior chamber itself although i'm attempting to push back the nucleus it's unlikely that it's going to go back so this is a very rare instance where the nucleus has just prolapsed out of the bag unintentionally this was a soft cataract and probably it found itself very easy to just nudge itself out of the bag and i'm going to emulsify it in the anterior chamber under the cover of ovd since the nucleus is very soft i'm not so much uh, worried about uh, the endothelial trauma which is going to because uh, the nucleus management is going to be predominantly in the anterior chamber dividing the nucleus is not going to be much of an issue because it's again a very soft nucleus and very carefully with very minimal amount of ultrasound energy the nucleus is emulsified bit by bit ensuring that there's no turbulence in the anterior chamber the posterior capsule is gently blown with the pss to clean off some of the cortex which is sticking onto it i'm inflating the bag with the hpmc to ensure that i've got enough space and uh, i don't go and catch the anterior capsule while aspirating the cortex uh, because i want to aspirate the cortex without pulling or tugging at the anterior capsule because it's going to induce some amount of zonal stress and worsen the pre-existing weakness slowly and very carefully uh, keeping an eye on where the aspiration port is holding gently the cortex is being peeled off 
as i'm aspirating the cortex i'm always keen on watching uh, how the capsule bag is behaving and trying to watch out for any worsening of the zonular weakness but so far so good the bag seems to be holding on well quite now so i have uh, I'm still not inserting the ctr so once all the cortex is aspirated out now is the time to implant the ctr the bag is being formed with sodium hyaluronate the ctr is gently threaded to the side port which is my preferred way of uh, inserting it i usually prefer the by manual way where a sinc cuk is used through my left hand to just compress it so that as it is being threaded i don't induce any stress on the zonules care is ensured that the weak area is well supported and finally the ctr goes into the bag the planned multi piece intraocular lens is being placed into the bag time to remove the ovd ovd both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out i'm just ascertaining the centration of the lens the lens seems to be very well centered the rexis also seems to be of appropriate size before closing i would always like to confirm the absence of any prolapsed vitreous because the pupil is abnormally wide in this area i just use diluted transfusion acetate to confirm that uh, there is no vitreous prolapse the incisions are hydrated uh, intracamel antibiotics are placed that's it the case is done these are the pictures on the first post op day and uh, on the 10th day again i confirm uh, after dilatation that the lens is very well centered the patient has a good visual outcome to summarize this case this case was of a very mildly subluxated lens as you could see that the insertion of the ctr was deferred until the last because i could feel that the zonules were strong enough to maintain the bag until the emulsification process and the cortex extraction was over so invariably i would always prefer to place the ctr at the early stage but this is one such case with very mild subluxation where uh, deferring the ctr did no harm so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful